We love company around here, so let's say what's up to brother Cliff Averill, 10-year NFL vet, former Pro Bowl defensive end, Super Bowl winner uh, with the Seahawks, also balled out with the Lions, 74 career sacks. Just want to make sure I, I didn't shortchange you. Yeah, 74 times you, you took down the quarterback. <laughs> exactly. Cliff, man, it's good to see you, brother. How's everything? I can't complain. I can't complain, man. How are you guys doing, man? Congrats on the new show as well, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate no, it. Appreciate it's it. It's a lot man. of fun we to appreciate do. Appreciate you coming, uh, coming, blessing us with it, man. So, honestly, man, you know what I want to do is I want to pick up uh, where we just left off uh, before the break. Michael and I were talking about the latest, with still two vacancies left to be filled, the latest disappointing hiring cycle for head coaches and black head coaches in the NFL, yeah. a league that, as you know, you were once part of the workforce, 70% um, is black of the players. Among mm. players, man, what do y'all talk about privately? What do y'all what do y'all think when y'all see time after time uh, qualified black coaches get passed over or the goalposts uh, being moved? You know, it, it's such an interesting thing, man. Because as a young player, honestly, you don't you don't process it that way because you're you're kind of trying to find your way through this NFL, right? You're trying to figure out how you can have the longevity because as as you mentioned, you know. The, the, the length of a career is, isn't long. So guys are just trying to figure it out. But as you get older, as you start to realize how this thing is, is ran, you know, you start to question, you start to, you start to question and, and you start asking ownership and you start having these types of conversations as well within the locker room of how can we help coaches? You know, I play with a bunch of guys, you know, talk about Michael Bennett, Richard Sherman, Marshawn, all these, all these guys. And we've all had this conversation of trying to understand like why we can't, get these coaches these jobs and why aren't there more coaches that look like us that are coaching us it but it's it's also you know college you know you same same type of situation as well and and it's it's mind-boggling to see how do you and and let's uh, i want to follow up on that on that question or that that uh statement you just put out there you said how do we help these coaches so the question is how do you help these coaches if if you can is there any thing that players could do to kind of uh, change this narrative. I think it's more on the, the positions that really matter. Don't get me wrong. You know, obviously I play defensive end. I'm a part of the team, but you know, I'm not, I'm not the guy making, I, I can't go up to the coach, the head coach's office anytime I want and say, Hey, this is what I demand or, or whatever. It has to be the quarterbacks. It has to be those guys that are, 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 are that have the name recognition that have that brand equity that know they aren't going anywhere. Right. You know, and, and it, it's not just black quarterbacks too. It has to be some of these white quarterbacks as well that have to go up to management when it's time to make these decisions and say, Hey, I won't said quarterback or I won't said uh, or I won't said coach to coach me. And and that's what it boils down to. Which brings us naturally to Deshaun Watson. Uh, yeah. Listen, man, you played in the league a long time. I've covered the league. So has Michael for a long time. This is this is the biggest power move that yes. I've seen anybody make. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, we saw we saw Elway, you know, and Eli, uh, you know, do it with the draft. Um, but we've never seen a, a, a black quarterback do anything like this. We don't see, you typically don't see NFL players do this. This is an NBA type power move that Deshaun yeah. is, is pulling with the Texans. What's, what's your, what's your take on how that situation has played out? And secondly, I'll ask you two questions in one, take on how it's played out and where would you like to see him end up if the Texans do in fact trade him? Well, I, I respect it because again, as players, it's only so many of us that have that kind of pool and it's mostly going to be quarterbacks right you talk about elway you talk about eli those guys did it and then you talk about just a black quarterback most of us uh players you know are are, are, are they kind of there's a little pushback on some of that stuff so to see deshaun doing what he's doing and, and he's voicing it and letting you know like hey this situation ain't working for me i want to be moved it's again like you just said it's not something that has has happened in the nfl so i'm happy that he's doing it. i'm happy that he's pushing the envelope and also showing other guys that hey you you are the product like without you nothing moves you know what i mean without you there is no game so to be able to show to understand that leverage and you got you got to also understand where you're at on that totem pole too because <laughs> you mess around and go do it and you you be jobless but somebody like deshaun i'm happy to see him pushing back and saying hey i only have so many years to play this game this is what I want. This is where I want to go. As far as for a team, 
I mean, any team uh, uh, like like a Miami, because I heard they were in talks. Like, I think that would be a good situation for him, right? Because there are some we- there are some weapons there, but he has to make sure he goes somewhere where he doesn't. He's not the only player like he was just in Houston. I think that's the biggest thing is check. Make sure you check out that roster and see see where hopefully they send you. Is it is it somewhere that's going to end your career either? You know, it's interesting. You talked about those guys, and I agree with you 100%. When you said those guys who have that name recognition, I think the term you used was brand equity. It was a great term. They've got to be able to take advantage of it and use the influence that they have. And I'm wondering if you played with guys like that and how they were perceived in the locker room. If they, uh, did you guys go up to them and say, look, man, we need an off day. We, we've been practicing too much. Go and, and do that. Like, how, how did they, how did that, uh, play in the locker room, and did you feel like you used it to your advantage, or was that guy, whoever it was, using it just to benefit him and not everybody else? Well, I, I think there's levels to it, right? I mean, there's a, there's a hierarchy in all of this, right? So, where you place that on on your team, as far as for leadership and veteran, uh, being a veteran might be completely different how how the NFL views you, right? So, I could be that person that can go talk to Coach Carroll or, or whoever the head coach is, like, hey, Coach. Hey, man, uh, you know, the guys is tired, man, and I don't see this practice being productive or whatever the case may be, and he'll probably listen to me. Now, the difference is if you're a quarterback, you can probably push the envelope a little further, right? You can push the envelope to get up out of there, to go wherever you want to go. It, so it just depends. But as far as for leadership in the locker room, you know, I mentioned Michael Bennett. I mentioned Marshawn. I mentioned Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, all these different individuals, like, they all had that brand equity. They all had that, that voice. And, and coaches respected what they brought to the table because they knew when they came to play, when they came to practice, it was all work. So if they're saying this, there must be something to it and they'll listen to it. So, you know, all of us would use it when we felt like it was time to make something happen. Uh, switching gears to the playoffs or this, this past weekend, um, we saw what we think is the end of a fellow Purdue Boilermakers career. I don't like yeah. you guys didn't play together. But I wonder if you have any, if you have a relationship with Drew Brees, if, if uh, you have a story about Drew Brees, you played against him, of course, and just, uh, and, and how would you uh, put into perspective the career that he's had, if in fact it is over? Yeah, you know, Drew is like a legend in West Lafayette, Indiana, you know, Purdue. Um, and, and when I went there, actually, the first time I met him, he probably won't even remember this, but the first time I met him, you know, he, he was coming back during the summertime training and I'm just watching him to see how pros practice, how they prepare for the season, you know, and he's doing all these things on a treadmill, you know, he's, he's running with the ball in his hands. Like he's dropped uh, back, back uh, in the pocket on the treadmill. And it was just, you know, just understanding the technology, uh, the, the mindset of a pro, but my first time playing Drew Brees, I felt like he big time. me. You know, I'm like, hey, uh, hey, Drew. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, you know, this is during the game, probably like a third quarter or second quarter, something like that. Like, hey, Drew, what's what's going on? And he like, he's zoned in. He ain't he ain't saying nothing. I'm like, hey, I'm a I'm a fellow Boilermaker. Like, what's good? Like, I know you seen the I know you seen the scout report. Like, I know you seen Purdue up under there. And he he still ignored me or whatever. So okay, a couple plays later, third down, hit my guy with a with a a, a nice little pass rush move, smacked him, sack sack uh, sacked him or whatever, whispered in the ear, boiler up. Guarantee you knew who I was at that point. So ever since then we've been pretty solid, pretty cool. That's what's up. Oh. Uh, Hey, uh, and I always hear from another Boilermaker, Roosevelt Coleman, always shouting out yeah. uh, Purdue. Loves him. That's my hey, guy. Hey, uh, Cliff, who do you like uh, in the Super Bowl and why? Or who do you like to get to the Super Bowl and to win it? Well, personally, um, I, I'm, I'm more a fan of, of, of guys that I know or players that I know. And personally, I would love for Buffalo to go only because my guy, Quentin Jefferson, he trains with me and, and he's been he's been doing his thing over there in Buffalo. But to be realistic as well, um, I think Casey, even with Mahomes not playing the rest of the game, like Andy Reid still didn't like he knows his team is good. You know, obviously Mahomes yeah. is that guy, but he knows his team is good because you've seen it off the play call. You talk about that fourth and one. They, I'm thinking they're just going to hard count. Crazy. They still roll. They still they pass it right. So he has yeah. confidence in his team, and a coach that has confidence in his team uh, overall, not just the quarterback, it shows shows a lot right there. So I'm gonna go with KC and then Green Bay, man. They've they've been playing some really good ball, man. Aaron Rodgers is, you know, I played against Aaron probably every single year of my career, and you know. You see how great he is. You see the talent. You obviously see some of the things he can do. 
but he took it to a whole nother level this season. You know, he took it to a whole nother level where he's so efficient. He's out there throwing dimes. I think he only had five interceptions this year. Uh, it's just unreal. So for me, I think those two teams will probably be in the Super Bowl. All right, Cliff April, man. We appreciate you falling through, dropping some knowledge, telling some cool stories. Yo, man, let's do this again sometime. Man, I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, let's make it happen, man. And y'all keep doing your thing. All right, thank, thank you, man. you, you too. Take care. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. No problem. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.